the cleansing of 750,000 Palestinians. And this colonial logic of conquest, destruction, and expulsion has continued to the present day. Today, about a third of the Palestinian people live under a brutal military occupation in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and Gaza. Israel has stolen land, built Jewish-only settlements, expelled Palestinians and cornered others into ghettos, surrounded by walls, military watchtowers and checkpoints. 12% of the Palestinian people live inside Israel as third-class citizens. They are subjected to a system of racial discrimination and racist laws that amounts to apartheid, as defined by the United Nations. Half of the Palestinian people continue to live outside Palestine as refugees, denied their right to return to their homes. In 2014, Israel carried out one of its bloodiest ever massacres of Palestinians in the besieged Gaza Strip. More than 2,000 people were killed, a quarter of them children. Israel is only able to maintain its regime of oppression because of the support of international governments and corporations. When those in power refuse to act to stop this injustice, we need a global citizen's response to stand alongside Palestinians in their struggle for freedom, justice, and equality. In 2005, Palestinian civil society came together to issue its call for boycott, divestment, and sanctions. The appeal calls for concerted nonviolent action to isolate Israel, as was done to apartheid South Africa. We are calling for boycott pressure on Israel until it complies with international law in the following ways. End its occupation and colonization of land seized in 1967. Recognize the right of the Palestinian citizens of Israel to full equality. Respect the right of Palestinian refugees to return to their homes. The BDS movement has empowered people across the world to take effective action against Israel. Trade unions, student groups, churches, academics, cultural figures, and social movements are joining together to make an impact. Already, because of BDS, Israeli export companies are complaining that it is getting harder to export their products, and grassroots action has prevented Israeli ships from docking at ports around the world. Major Israeli exporter SodaStream, targeted by our campaign, has announced plans to close a factory it operates in an illegal Israeli settlement. G4S and Veolia, two huge corporations that help Israel maintain its occupation, have lost billions of dollars worth of contracts as a result of BDS activism. Both companies are now talking about ending their role in Israel's crimes. Some European governments are now taking action against aspects of Israel's occupation, and several U.S. academic associations have endorsed a comprehensive academic boycott of Israeli universities. And many prominent musicians and artists support the cultural boycott of Israel, refusing to perform there. Israeli business leaders and politicians are warning that the boycott is starting to isolate Israel. In fact, the government is so worried about the strategic threat that BDS poses to their regime of oppression that it's using its enormous resources to undermine the movement. There's a real fear within Israel that it is fast becoming the pariah state that South Africa once was. But Israel's recent massacre of Palestinians in Gaza is a painful reminder that there's still so much more we need to do. With your support, we can develop even more hard-hitting BDS campaigns and get the word about Palestinian rights out to a wider audience. So please, consider making a donation to the Palestinian BDS National Committee, the largest Palestinian coalition that leads the global movement. It will be a real contribution to the Palestinian struggle for freedom, justice and equality. Israel could lose up to $11.5 billion a year if the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement peaks. That's if the EU legislates to boycott all Israeli goods and blocks foreign investment into the state. Is this likely to happen? Well, opinions vary. Israel's government economists say it's hard to predict, but it is possible. Foreign investment into Israel fell to around $6 billion in 2014. That's the same year they launched a deadly offensive on Gaza that killed 1,462 civilians. But by 2016, that figure had doubled to almost $12 billion. What about exports? 
Washington-based Brookings Institute says consumer boycotts won't drastically affect Israel's economy. But data from the World Bank shows Israel's intermediate exports dropped by nearly $8 billion in that same period. Consumer boycotts work with academic and cultural boycotts. If people refuse to work with Israeli academic institutions for their involvement in, let's say, the strategies behind the use of disproportionate force against the Palestinians, or musicians refuse to perform in Israel in solidarity with the people of Gaza and the West Bank, it gets people talking. Lord Elvis Costello, Lauren Hill, they've all refused to play in Israel. And other artists are openly advocating for BDS. How can I work with any institution complicit in Israeli human rights abuses? These smaller boycotts are supposed to start a chain reaction. Sanctions is the ultimate. That's why it's BDS. S comes at the end. It's, it's no coincidence. Because you need a lot of B and D to reach the S. And it's slowly working. Companies are closing up shop in Israel. Some have been refused lucrative contracts explicitly for their involvement in Israeli occupation projects. Others are speculated to have been pressured by the BDS campaign into submission. But whatever their motives, they've divested from Israel. A UN report has also found 206 companies that are linked to illegal settlements. The company's activities range from banking and telecom to construction and tourism. Their names are being withheld until they've all been contacted. US Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley reportedly threatened the UN Human Rights Council with a cut in funding if the names were to be published. South American states have also disassociated themselves. Venezuela and Bolivia have cut ties with Israel, and Brazil refused to allow former leader of the settler movement, Danny Dayan, to be Israel's ambassador in the country. The communities we established decades ago in the Jordan Valley will be here forever because they are essential for Israel's existence. BDS, more than anything, is impacting brand Israel. I'm less concerned today about any potential economic consequences. It's all about what you think of Israel and whether you think Israelis are the good guys or the bad guys. Image on the world stage would matter to any country. It's no different for Israel. Many prominent Israelis have claimed BDS is anti-Semitic and even a threat to the existence of Israel itself. We're in the midst of an orchestrated global campaign to delegitimize Israel. Uh, Mr. Assad Abu Khalil, who he knows very well, is a leader of the BDS movement. He writes, the real aim of BDS is to bring down the state of Israel. The objectives of the BDS movement are one, the liberation and the end of this occupation. Number two, the return of refugees to their homes and to their livelihoods. Number three is the end of apartheid and segregation and discrimination against Palestinians inside Israel and everywhere else. Israel has refused all three time and again. The Netanyahu government instead enacted anti-BDS legislation at home and gave covert power to the Ministry of Strategic Affairs to tackle BDS abroad. They successfully lobbied a number of US states to punish supporters of the movement. 24 states have passed laws restricting their business with companies that boycott Israel just in the past two and a half years. And these states are saying, we regard boycotting Israel to be a form of national, religious or ethnic discrimination. It's bigotry and we won't do business with it. The ministry has since established a commando unit in order to launch campaigns against pro-Palestinian projects. BDS has now been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. At the same time, Israel has banned the members of 20 activist groups from entering the country, including the Jewish Voice for Peace. Although Israel's economy has not been crippled by boycotts and divestments, the movement is having a serious impact on the country's reputation. And we all remember what that did to South Africa. He is the distinguished representative of the Republic of South Africa.
Assalamualaikum, selamat petang and uh, a very good evening to everyone. My name is Shuhada and I will be the moderator for tonight's cultural event, um, hashtag United Against Racism. So uh, this program uh, is being organized by BDS Movement Malaysia and also MWCQP Malaysian Women's Coalition for al Quds and Palestine. And uh, the co-organizer are Mike Rose to Rose, Stand Up Flash Mob or SUF, uh, Pemuda Gema and also Viva Palestina. So welcome to today's cultural night. Um, today uh, we will use two languages. Kita akan guna bahasa Melayu dan juga bahasa English. Uh, dan kita akan lebih banyakkan interaksi. So jangan biarkan saya keseorangan di sini. Uh, anda boleh tekan komen uh, di di ruangan komen. Kita sekarang sedang live di um, United Against Appetite Facebook, uh, MWCQP, Malaysian Women's Coalition for al and Palestine uh, Facebook and also BDS Malaysia um, Facebook. So uh, tulis sahaja komen anda di sana dan kita akan uh, naikkan dan kita akan baca bersama-sama. So this is a cultural night, uh, Palestinian, Palestine cultural night um, with, a, with a hashtag uh, United Against Racism. So hari ini kita akan ada pelbagai um, video yang telah disusunkan, ada video yang informatif, ada video yang um, video yang ada performance, maknanya ada lagu, kita ada international, kita ada Malaysian punya artis. So pastikan anda bersama dengan kami sehingga ke uh, akhir uh, program ini insyaAllah. Okay, uh, tujuan IAW. Okay, IAW ni apa? Israeli apa type with me? Uh, kalau tengok di, di bahagian atas saya, this is the Kalau pergi ke Facebook United, uh, <coughs> kalau pergi ke Facebook Israeli Appetite Week, uh, anda akan nampak logo ini. Ini adalah um, apa ya uh, gambar yang yang banyak digunakan uh, pada tahun ini. So dia adalah program satu minggu, mana sepanjang minggu ini dan kebetulan uh, it's uh, the first week of uh, April. Uh, betul, official poster. Ini adalah official poster uh, untuk uh, Israel again. Apatah, Israeli Apatah Week. So atau nama pendeknya adalah IAW. Ada yang bagi tahu I, uh, I tu adalah international. It's not Israel. You're not supposed to say the word Israel. Tak ada masalah. <laughs> kita uh, kita sedang kenapa Israeli? So kita nak bagi tahu dia ke sepanjang kempen ini siapa Israel, siapa Palestin dan kenapa kita kena boycott. Uh, sebab tu uh, ke, ke, kebanyakan uh, iklan seperti iklan HP yang anda lihat tadi adalah berkaitan dengan uh, BDS. Apa itu BDS? So uh, nanti kita akan sama-sama uh, ikuti sehingga ke akhir akhir rancangan. Okay, uh, saya ingin kongsikan di sini uh, the objective of IAW sebab program ni, IAW ni uh, global. Maksudnya semua negara, uh, lebih daripada 20 negara lagi telah telah uh, buat live stream, telah buat talk, telah buat discussion about this. So apa itu IAW? Uh, one of the objective of IAW is actually to raise awareness about Israeli appetite. So kita kita pernah dengar appetite ni macam oh dekat Afrika zaman dulu-dulu kan. So what what is appetite and and uh, kenapa ada Israeli appetite week? Kenapa bukan Palestine appetite week? Ha. So nanti kita akan sama-sama dengan pakar uh, kita ada Dr Peter Slezak, kita ada wakil daripada Palestine sendiri, kita ada Kedah Aziz, Malaysian hip hop artist. We also have uh, international artists, low key, kalau siapa kenal British rapper. So akan ada uh, banyak video clip dan juga uh, penerangan daripada pakar-pakar mengenai uh, mengenai uh, IAW ini. Okay, so untuk tidak membuangkan masa, um, sekarang dah sembilan, pukul sembilan. So kita minta tim teknikal untuk pasangkan montage dulu. Okay, <laughs> tim teknikal dah ready? Boleh playkan montage? Silakan.
Okay, terima kasih uh, Tim Technical. Um, it was a very nice and a very good um, montage just now. It explains very briefly um, how how does it, okay, apa tak ini, um, saya cakap bahasa Melayu dulu eh. So apa tak ini uh, dia membezakan antara satu golongan dan satu golongan. So di, dalam video tadi kita nampak mana Palestin uh, banyak benda dia tak boleh buat. Kalau dia kalau dia keluar daripada Palestin dia tak boleh balik. No rights to return. Okay. Dan mereka tak boleh pergi ke serta-serta tempat. Dan Israel uh, orang dia boleh pergi ke ke semua kawasan uh, tanpa tanpa perlu lalu checkpoint and everything kan uh, dan ada banyak-banyak lagi uh, kelebihan yang mereka bagi sebagai apa rakyat Israel. Jadi nanti uh, kita punya pakar-pakar akan juga uh, menerangkan lebih lanjut mengenai isu ni. Okay so um, jangan lupa untuk komen, like dan share uh, di, di social media anda dan setiap komen anda kami akan cuba uh, jika ada masa kita akan cuba untuk naikkan di sini. Okay, um, okay di Malaysia kalau nampak tadi di montaj tu uh, di bahagian akhir sekali kita ada 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 poster United Against Apartheid. That is actually a virtual rhyme uh, yang mana uh, kita start dia punya flag flag off eh. Uh, larian yang pertama kita bermula pada uh, pada minggu lepas uh, di Taman Tasik Titiwangsa di mana 400 t-shirt percuma uh, oleh BDS Malaysia yang disponsor oleh BDS Malaysia dan juga 100 pen uh, daripada BDS Malaysia uh, telah di, diserahkan dan juga dipost uh, kepada semua peserta yang mendaftar. Jadi kita buat larian secara maya, kita cuba untuk mencapai 72,000 kilometer iaitu jarak secara atas uh, secara uh, melalui jalan darat daripada Malaysia kepada ke Palestin. So uh, jika anda belum lagi uh, register uh, tak apa yang t-shirt tu kalau tak dapat pun tak apa boleh guna t-shirt biasa je untuk lari. Uh, pastikan anda register dan masukkan kilometer kat situ. Kita nak bersama-sama dengan semua uh, minta maaf 12,000 kilometer eh. Kita nak cuba uh, untuk kumpul 12,000 kilometer bersama-sama secara virtual yang lari dekat atas treadmill pun boleh, berenang pun boleh. Um, kalau motosikal Motosikal, organizer, kita motosikal boleh kan? Um, um, berenang pun boleh juga. So kita kumpulkan semua uh, semua kilometer ni dan ini adalah kita punya kira usaha kita lah untuk sama-sama sampai sampai ke Palestin secara virtual. Okay. Um, so kita ada banyak video uh, yang akan uh, akan akan diplaykan sebentar lagi. So uh, kita terus pergi kepada agenda kita yang pertama iaitu sharing daripada Dr. Peter Slezak. Uh, so Dr. Peter, Peter Slezak is an independent Australian Jewish voice, IAJV, uh, Australian Jewish Advocacy Organization. Um, he's also a member of APAN, Australian Palestine Advocacy Network, and also a committee of BDS Australia. So let us um, listen to his talk and, and um, do comment uh, in the comment section and then we will try to discuss um, all the points that that uh, you share with us. Okay, Tim Technical, will you share again? I want to discuss the case of apartheid as it applies to the State of Israel. There have been three reports recently in the last year or so uh, by the Israeli Human Rights Organization, uh, B'Tselem, by Human Rights Watch and the very significant Amnesty International. The Israeli report makes a very important point. It says that the regime of Jewish supremacy applies from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. In other words, it applies to the state of Israel itself, which is always proclaimed to be a great democracy, but it's not just in the West Bank and Gaza. The Human Rights Watch report is titled A Threshold Cross, but this is actually very misleading. The threshold hasn't been crossed just recently. The uh, human rights violations and discriminations have been going on at least since 1948 with the catastrophe, the Nakba. And so these are not recent developments, and it's important to understand that. The Amnesty International report makes the, the, the point clear. It says that the um, system was established in 1948 through the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. Another important point to note is that the claim of apartheid is no longer a comparison with uh, South Africa, where the term originated. It is now a, a crime in international law, which is enshrined in the 1973 Apartheid Convention and the 1998 Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. The report sets out the massive seizures of Palestinian land, the unlawful killings, forcible transfers, 
drastic movement restrictions on Palestinians and the denial of nationality and citizenship to Palestinians, certainly in the West Bank and Gaza, and the situation inside Israel is, is comparably uh, terrible. Um, a very important report points to a shortcoming of these um, uh, descriptions of, of apartheid. The amnesty report fails to recognise that apartheid is a tool of Zionist settler colonialism, and it fails to consider the role of this Zionist ideology and the institutions in establishing and maintaining the system. And it also, importantly, re avoids, refrains from recognising the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination. Of course, predictably, the Zionist response is a simple denialism. I mean, Mark Liebler is the president of a leading Israel lobby organization and simply shows a propaganda video and says there's no such thing as apartheid in Israel. Another propagandist, uh, Azan Osofsky, says it's lies, incitement and Jew hatred from Human Rights Watch, which is the typical uh, attempt to rebut the claims, avoiding the facts and simply relying on smears and, uh, and, and defamations. In some ways more significant, the mainstream media, Greg Sheridan is the foreign editor of The Australian, and his response is to say that the Amnesty Report is a disgusting document. No one could intelligently describe Israel as an apartheid state. It's simply an infamous lie and contributes to anti-Semitism, the usual charge. Well, this is the mainstream media. The extraordinary thing about these is that the facts are uncontroversial, overwhelmingly documented, and it's extraordinary that people can get away with this kind of outright denial and rejection. Well, some years ago, the claim of apartheid was already made by the former uh, president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, but limitations are very interesting. He says his book was not describing what's going on inside Israel, which is a wonderful democracy, he said. And he said he's never alleged that the framework of apartheid existed within Israel. This is uh, terribly uh, misleading and mistaken, and even then was, was uh, completely without foundation. So let's look at uh, the distinctions. We have to separate out Israel itself proper, the military uh, occupation of the West Bank and, and East Jerusalem and Gaza. They're completely different and we have to understand them separately. Inside Israel proper, the human rights organization Adala, based in Haifa, has documented 50 at least discriminatory laws that show that uh, there's no equal rights or democracy for the Palestinians. I can't go through them all, but the idea that Israel is a democracy is simply a lie and it's overwhelmingly well documented by uh, Adala and other organizations. For example, well known in the history of Israel, it was the, the role of the JNF, which was uh, the Jewish National Fund founded uh, in the first Zionist Congress. It's by law a kind of quasi-governmental organization, which is described as charged with managing public land and resources, but actually that's a euphemism for expropriating Palestinian land. The JNF openly discriminates against non-Jews and sees itself as serving only one population. The JNF stipulates only Jews can buy, mortgage, or lease the JNF land, which is a large part of the land of the state of Israel. The other important feature is the uh, so-called Israeli law of return in 1950. It's a fiction which was invented and, and, and made up uh, to, to, to um, claim that uh, all Jews anywhere in the world have the right to Im immigrate to Israel and have automatic citizenship. This is the so-called uh, Jewish uh, law of return, but it completely rejects the law that is enshrined in international law, the Palestinian right of return, which is the right of all Palestinians who are still holding their keys to the houses from which they were evicted and uh, uh, expelled in 1948 Nakba. And any Jew around the world has more rights than the Palestinians who still hold their keys. And to, to make it perfectly clear, in, in 2018, Israel declared the nation state law, which gives the right to exercise national self-determination uh, in Israel uniquely to the Jewish people. When the state of Israel was born in 1948, it's very interesting and significant to note, as was noted candidly by Ariel Sharon, a former president, a uh, prime minister, rather, he made the important point that the terms democracy or democratic are totally absent from the Declaration of Independence. He said, this is not an accident because the intention of Zionism was not to bring democracy, needless to say, it was solely motivated by the creation of a Jewish state belonging to all the Jewish people and only to the Jewish people. These were very candid remarks of the early founders of Israel, which are quite different from more recent attempts to cover up the, the sordid truths. So let's turn to the West Bank, which as I say, is much worse than apartheid because it's a brutal military occupation. The conditions of the West Bank were uh, determined by the Oslo Agreement in 1993, which is part of what is called the peace process. But the peace process is a fraud, as has been described by many scholars. It's been basically the, the, the means for 
for entrenching Israel's complete control of the West Bank. And Edward Said already described it as an instrument of Palestinian surrender. That's what the West Bank looks like. It's this uh, series of enclaves of banter stands, in fact, as Aro Sharon described it, in which uh, 60% is under complete uh, Israeli control. And even the areas under the Palestinian Authority control basically permit I Israelis to come in and arrest and shoot people at will. So basically, this is the Swiss cheese model, which is what's left of the uh, Palestinian, uh, historic Palestinian uh, uh, state. And the West Bank is covered by a crisscross of, of, of roads and infrastructure. So uh, this is hardly a state that is a viable one. And of course, the settlements. The growth in, in settlers uh, is uh, at, at now at a level, um, in 2018, it was 400 odd thousand, it's now 700 odd thousand. Every single settler is illegal in, in international law under the Geneva Conventions. So they're being uh, swamped now by settlers, and this is what a settlement looks like. They're provided with all the modern infrastructure of water and electricity and everything else, whereas the uh, Palestinians uh, are subject to, to restrictions. For example, at the checkpoints and the uh, border controls, you have this kind of crush where the Palestinians have to suffer these indignities on their way to work every single day. The idea that there's no occupation, as is often said, is, is clearly a lie. This photograph I took in uh, the uh, Damascus Gate on the way into the Old City, there are Israeli soldiers swarming all over the Old City and everywhere in the West Bank. This is uh, in the West Bank where they shoot unarmed civilians. In fact, the Israeli forces target children with live ammunition to quash the projects as reported in some of the media. And since the year 2000, Israeli security forces have killed over 8,000 Palestinians of whom 2,000 at least have been children. This is an average of two children killed each week by Israeli forces. And they're subject to administrative detention, arbitrary uh, arrest, uh, and administrative detention means there's no trial, no, no hearings, and they're just kept indefinitely with this kind of control. This is what the West Bank looks like. This is much worse than apartheid. And of course, the house demolitions. Over 50,000 houses have been demolished in the West Bank since 1967. They come in in the middle of the night and evict the, 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 the occupants of the house and demolish their homes. This is a regular occurrence. The water is stolen. 90% of the aquifers in the West Bank are diverted to Israelis, leaving Palestinians only 10% of their own water. So they have to have these tanks on the top of their roofs, which you don't see on the Israeli settlements. These are to preserve whatever water they can get. The um, Jerusalem is now expanded. Israel, Israel has expanded the border of Jerusalem way out almost across the West Bank to Jericho so that the uh, Palestinians don't have access to the old city and their holy sites. And, uh, and in fact, their citizenship uh, is, is um, uh, restricted, or at least, in fact, they're only permanent residents, not citizens. The residency status is conditional on a whole lot of very harsh restrictions and is easily revoked. And in fact, 14,000 East Jerusalem Palestinians have had their residency revoked since 1967. Let's turn to Gaza finally. Gaza is much worse than the West Bank and very far from being just apartheid. In fact, contrary to the claims that Israel left, uh, they left their, they took their settlers out, but in fact, under international law, um, uh, Gaza is still under the belligerent occupation of the Israelis because they control everything, the water, the air, the, uh, the material coming in and out and so on. The border of uh, Gaza is a wall, and uh, with, within a couple of hundred metres of the wall uh, is a free fire zone, and Palestinians tending what are the most fertile areas in their crops get shot. Fishermen can't go out more than a few miles, although, according to Oslo, they should be allowed to go out 20 miles. In fact, the conditions in Gaza are so bad that it's been described by human rights agencies as now getting to the stage of being unlivable. The uh, food security is, is uh, severe. The water is undrinkable. The... Um, uh, unemployment is huge. Basically, Gaza is, is, is sinking into a, a, the most appalling state, and it's under a crime of what's uh, called uh, collective punishment in international law. These are citizens, uh, nearly 2 million uh, civilians that are under this kind of criminal blockade. And the claim that uh, Israel is defending itself against Gaza, against Hamas, is uh, a lie and a misrepresentation of the military realities, which I can't describe in detail, but has been set out by many, uh, including Norman Finkelstein, um, who's the leading scholar of, of uh, the whole Israel-Palestine dispute. These are the rockets, which are technically, of course, um, 
firing indiscriminately against civilians and to that extent in violation of international law. But uh, they can't be criticised uh, unless Israel is, is understood and criticised to be responsible for the provocations and the violations on a huge scale. This is the result of one of those rockets. But this is what Israel has at its disposal, which is um, actually the fourth most powerful military in the world. The Palestinians don't have a single aeroplane or a helicopter or a tank, whereas this is what Israel has uh, lined up against the civilians of Gaza. And this is the result of their repeated incursions and military um, uh, actions, devastating what are essentially civilian residential areas. The idea that these are pinpointed at military targets is a lie. And it's clearly seen in these illustrations where you can see what Gaza looks like after one of Israel's incursions. Incidentally, according to an explicit military doctrine called the Dahia Doctrine, where the policy is to inflict disproportionate uh, military uh, attacks and damage on the civilians of Gaza, uh, uh, it's an explicit doctrine called the Dahia Doctrine. And this is what Gaza looks like. So this is not uh, mere apartheid. It's a much greater crime. Finally, let me just say that um, the many myths that are propagated in the mainstream about Israel have been uh, usefully exposed by the uh, Israeli historian Ilan Pape. I've added a few, but among those, as we've seen, the idea that there's no apartheid in Israel itself or in the West Bank is one of the many uh, myths that we need to understand. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Peter. Okay, uh, we have to apologize that uh, Dr. Peter did not um, slideshow uh, his screen, um, but I think you get the idea, right? What what he's trying he's trying to say. Okay, uh, kalau saya boleh berikan sedikit summary uh, di dalam bahasa Melayu. Um, ada beberapa poin penting lah yang telah Dr. Peter mention tadi. Uh, one of it is Israel as appetite. Macam mana media, um, terutamanya di Australia lah sebab Dr. Peter based dekat Australia kan. So macam mana media Australia tu memportraykan. So orang cakap macam self-defense lah. Orang cakap uh, that is not appetite, all these are lies. Uh, so macam mana media tu dimanipulasikan um, untuk untuk mencuba untuk menyembunyikan uh, kebenaran. Um, kemudian ada perkataan Israel settlement. Uh, kalau 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 kat Malaysia ni dulu kita ada perkataan apa ya? Duduk secara haram eh. Rumah-rumah uh, yang duduk secara haram, rumah kongsi semua kan. Uh, tapi Israel settlement ni it's not like settlement macam uh, apa ya? Yang rumah pangsa ke apa tahu. Israel settlement ni kalau tengok rumah-rumah uh, mereka memang satu pembangunan yang terancang. So kalau tengok gambar-gambar yang Dr. Peter tunjuk tadi, uh, dekat Israel pembangunan dia sangat terancang dan sangat cantiklah bangunan dia. Tak ada masalah air apa semua kan tadi. Uh, tapi dekat Gaza pula dia orang bom dan dia orang hancurkan uh, kawasan kawasan perumahan tu. Kenapa dia buat macam tu? Sebab dia nak luaskan lagi uh, dia punya apa ya? so called tanah yang mereka ambil lah. Okay, uh, kemudian kita ada perkataan house demolition. Okay, ini kenapa salah satu sebab kenapa kita kena boycott Caterpillar, uh, BDS, boycott the investment sanction. So, BDS, the whole like global memang dah berusaha, rasanya dah dekat lebih daripada dua tahun lah, mereka dah berusaha untuk advokasi mengenai Caterpillar sebab mereka menggunakan jentera-jentera uh, Caterpillar ni untuk menghancurkan rumah-rumah uh, Palestinian. So, uh, dan lepas tu air. Okay, uh, tadi Dr. Peter ada tunjukkan dekat atas rumah-rumah dekat Palestin ni atas dia tu ada macam tangki-tangki air kan. Uh, sebabnya mereka satu air 90% memang memang uh, Israel ambil lah. Lepas tu air yang disalurkan balik kepada Palestin tu uh, satu dia buat catuan. Satu lagi air tu tak bersih. Macam United Nation mention it's not Um, it's not livable because of the water quality. Uh, kita bayangkan kalau kita dekat Malaysia ni tiba-tiba air kita kotor. Ya, memang kita terus angkat telefon terus apa komen dekat Facebook, Syabas ke mana-mana kawasan uh, uh, kita kan cakap oh air tak bersih ni, air berkeladak ni kan ha, dan mereka akan ambil tindakan kan. Tapi untuk Palestin mereka memang tak boleh nak nak defensekan mereka lagi. Uh, So um, air adalah satu satu isu yang sangat besar jugalah di Palestin. So uh, United Nation mention um, apa susah nak hidup di Palestin satu tempat yang unlivable maknanya 
susahlah kita tak boleh nak hidup dekat situ. Kalau kita contohnya kita pergi jungle kan, kita pergi uh, masuk hutan contohnya, kita masih boleh hidup lagi dekat sana maybe seminggu, dua minggu, kita bina kemah and everything. Tapi mengikut kata United Nations, Palestine is unlivable, tak boleh nak duduk dekat situ sebab food security dia problem. Kalau tak ada makanan, kita tak boleh nak survive dan juga water quality dia dekat situ. Okay, uh, so banyaklah pula saya kupas. Uh, jap, satu lagi, poin yang terakhir. Uh, Dr. Peter ada mention perkataan Ben Tustin. Okay, Ben Tustin ni, um, I explain the explanation dalam bahasa English. Eh. Um, the enclave uh, of, often referred to as Ben Tustin, particularly not uh, exclusive by those critical of Israeli policy towards Palestinian in reference to the territory set aside for black inhabitants in appetite of South Africa. So kalau siapa ingat, uh, waktu appetite dekat, dekat uh, South Africa, so apa yang jadi waktu tu? Mereka membezakan, apatah ni macam memisahkan lah eh. Mereka membezakan orang putih dengan orang kulit hitam. Okay, based on colour. Tapi kalau kita kalau kita nak tengok dalam keadaan Palestin dan juga Israel ni, colour, colour kulit mereka mungkin lebih kurang sama. Lebih kurang orang Arab punya colour kulit kan. Tapi undang-undang um, yang mereka kenakan. Okay, kalau kamu sebentar lagi akan ada video on passport eh. Mereka ada ada beberapa jenis passport. Jadi kalau awak pegang passport Palestin. Layanan dia berbeza. Kalau awak pegang pasport Israel, ini layanan yang mereka berikan. Okay, so uh, maybe sebelum kita beralih kepada video yang seterusnya, okay, tadi video tadi agak agak uh, macam masuk pelajar balik ke kelas kan. So video-video yang selepas ni insya Allah akan lebih santai sikit lah. Uh, kita akan ada video daripada anak-anak Palestin yang tinggal di Malaysia daripada Zaituna Club. Tapi sebelum tu uh, boleh tim teknikal naikkan maybe sedikit uh, komen yang ada supaya saya tak cakap sorang-sorang kat sini. Boleh terus naikkan komen anda. Okay Muhammad Rizwan cakap free Palestin. Okay seterusnya daripada Nurul Ain. Moga usaha ini mampu memberi kesedaran dengan lebih jelas buat umat Islam khususnya di Malaysia keep it up. Tahniah kepada penganjur uh, which is BDS Malaysia and also MWCKP. Daripada Muhammad Nazari Ismail, uh, freedom, justice, equality, free Palestine. Well, <coughs> sorry. Well done to the organizers. Okay. Um, okay kita akan tunggu lagi komen-komen yang, uh, yang akan masuk sebentar lagi. Okay, so sedikit maklumat mengenai Zaituna Club. Zaituna Club adalah Palestinian um, club yang dibuat khas untuk anak-anak Palestin untuk memberikan peluang ataupun aktiviti kepada anak-anak Palestin ini untuk uh, melakukan aktiviti sesama mereka. Dan directornya adalah Sister Badaria sendiri. Um, tim teknikal akan letakkan uh, Facebook page mereka ataupun kontak mereka dan nanti jika um, ada yang ingin menghubungi mereka secara langsung silakan mereka base di Gombak. Okey, mari kita saksikan video daripada anak-anak Palestin di Gombak.
This is Badriya Salim from the Ikuna Club. In this Al-Aqsa Global Week, we are against normalization in Israel. Okay, free, free Palestine. So, uh, the Ahi video tadi ada uh, Sister Badriya Salim. So, she's the director. So, team kami juga telah uh, berikan. Maybe team technical boleh naikkan uh, Facebook. Apa ya? Yeah? The, the comment on the Facebook page, uh, yeah, Al Zaituna Club, okay, need to link uh, Facebook mereka. So, kalau lihat uh, official poster yang ada di belakang saya dan juga baju mereka, kan, nampak kan dia punya persamaan, merah putih dengan dia punya cross stitch di belakang. So, memang, memang cantiklah. Uh, macam kita punya songket, mereka ada, mereka punya, dia panggil apa ya, top or embroidery mereka kat sini. Okay, um, so kalau tengok tadi dia punya subtitle, I have to speak in English now. So if you see the video just now, it was, um, there is a subtitle in Malay. So if you want us to make, to to do, um, or to to put the subtitle in English, uh, we need at least 10,000 um, likes for this video, then only we will add on the, the English subtitle. Um, and satu lagi, uh, apa ni, disclaimer lah eh, semasa video ni dibuat, uh, kami mengikut semua uh, SOP COVID uh, mana kita, kita memang dah apa sanitize, kita ambil temperature, apa design, uh, memang semua uh, kalau nampak macam dekat-dekat tadi tu sebab ni memang, uh, tapi kita dah patuhilah semua uh, SOP uh, untuk COVID-19. Okay. <coughs> Um, seterusnya, okay, seterusnya kita ada video daripada uh, Malaysian artist uh, and also international artist Keda Aziz. So she's also a Palestinian activist. Um, so let us watch uh, her video. Hi everyone, my name is Keda and I'm a singer, rapper, songwriter from Malaysia. Music is art. It moves emotions. Through music, one can send positive messages and lift up the spirits and give hope to those who are suppressed. Through music, one can also create an awareness on injustice going on in the world. Through music, one can also bring some joy and comfort in the hearts for those who need it. And through music, one can also be the voice for those who have been oppressed. Oh, 
Tajuk lagu daripada Kedah tadi adalah Lemas um, Okay, nanti Tim Teknikal akan share kan uh, YouTube beliau uh, Boleh kom- boleh like and share Like and share, comment Comment, like and share uh, YouTube Kedah Aziz We really thank Kedah Aziz for uh, her beautiful song just now uh, She is one of the Palestinian activists that also write songs In order to advocate people about the Palestinian issues Okay um, is there any comment, Tim Technical? Mungkin kita boleh naikkan komen sedikit. Ada satu komen tadi. Uh, berkaitan dengan Zaituna. Okay, daripada Nazari Ismail. What a beautiful and meaningful presentation by the children from the from a Zaituna school. Masya Allah, Barakamahu Fik. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, if anyone is interested, uh, boleh boleh uh, contact mereka directly. Um, boleh hubungi juga BDS Malaysia ataupun MWCQP kita memang selalu buat uh, program de- cultural dengan mereka dan kadang-kadang kita pinjam juga baju tradisional mereka so kita tak ada baju tradisional mereka for any of their events lah. Okay uh, saya ingin wawarkan lagi sekali uh, kita punya larian tadi United Against Apartheid uh, it's a virtual run. Kita ada Facebook juga boleh google Facebook uh, United Against Apartheid uh, di mana kita target untuk kita mensasarkan untuk uh, mengumpul 12,000 kilometer uh, jarak da- di antara Malaysia dan Palestin. So ini boleh buat secara virtual. Okay hari ini dah 1 April mungkin SOP dah dilonggarkan sedikit tapi pastikan jika anda uh, join larian maya ini anda masih lagi mengikut uh, SOP lah. So kita jaga kita lah eh. Pastikan keselamatan. Kalau Tak nak lari di luar, uh, boleh lari di treadmill sendiri ke, pusing dekat rumah. Mana tahu kita boleh pusing dekat rumah kita satu kilometer. And then just uh, submit sahaja. Apa, tekan berapa kilometer dah kita sumbangkan. So dia macam secara virtual, sama-sama kita menuju ke ke ke, ke Palestin Sebab nak pergi secara fizikalnya tak boleh kan. So kita sama-sama pergi secara, uh, secara virtual. Okay. Um, seterusnya. Okay, ni agak... <coughs> it's a very nice and interesting uh, clip. Uh, kita akan sharekan um, Amnesty International clip. Okay, Amnesty International ni siapa? It's a global movement of more than 10 million people in over 150 countries and territories who campaign to end abuse of human rights. So video ni akan tunjukkan sedikit sebanyaklah comparison apa sebenarnya yang berlaku di Palestin dan juga Israel. So uh, tim teknikal boleh playkan uh, video daripada Amnesty? Apartheid, what do you think of? Probably the disturbing images of racial segregation between whites and blacks in South Africa, where a regime ruled by a racist white minority declared themselves officially superior to the black majority, then proceeded to dominate them. South Africa's apartheid system officially ended in the mid-1990s, but that doesn't mean apartheid can't happen elsewhere. Here, in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, Palestinians are being forced off their land and out of their homes, separated and segregated by laws, walls and checkpoints. They live in a constant state of fear and insecurity and deliberately impoverished. While, on the other hand, Israeli authorities have given the Jewish Israeli population privilege over Palestinians in just about every facet of life. The question is, does this all amount to the crime of apartheid? First, the definition of apartheid. The crime against humanity of apartheid is perpetrated when particular serious human rights violations are committed with the purpose of establishing and maintaining a system of domination by one racial group over another and systematically oppressing them. 
But does this system exist in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories? And there's been a growing debate about whether the situation in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories is apartheid. And now is the time for us, as the world's largest human rights organization, to offer up our analysis. Our findings and criticism are directed not at the Jewish people, but at the Israeli state. It's the Israeli state that put in place the policies that implement the laws and the practices that oppress Palestinians. Well, Israeli leaders have been clear about their intentions from the beginning. In 1948, just before he became the first Prime Minister of Israel, Ben Gurion visited Lifta and other Palestinian areas near Jerusalem that were completely emptied of Palestinian residents following attacks by Jewish forces. He stated, There are no Arabs, 100% Jews. If we persist, it is quite possible that in the next six or eight months there will be considerable changes in the country, very considerable, and to our advantage. More than 70 years later, then Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu posted on Instagram that Israel is not a state of all its citizens, but rather the nation-state of the Jewish people and only them. So. It's no surprise that Israel built a system of racially discriminatory laws, policies and practices that privilege only Jewish people. And Palestinians? Well, Palestinians live there too. They were there before Israel was established. But, as we will explain, they've been trapped for decades in a system that treats them as a lesser, non-Jewish racial group. Before Israel was established in 1948, Palestinians comprised most of the population, around 70%, and owned the vast majority of private land, about 90%, in what was British Mandate Palestine. Jews, many of whom had emigrated from Europe, comprised around 30% of the population, and they and Jewish institutions owned about 6.5% of the land. The port of Haifa in Palestine lies shattered by bombs and strewn with dead. In the course of establishing Israel as a Jewish state in 1948, Israeli authorities acted to turn the situation on its head and were responsible for the mass expulsion of Palestinians and the destruction of hundreds of villages, forcing around 800,000 Palestinians out of their homes and lands. Thousands of Palestinians and Jews were killed in the context of attacks on civilians during this conflict. Today there are around 6 million Palestinian refugees who Israel denies the right to return to their homes. After the 1967 war, Israel occupied the Palestinian territories of the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and Gaza. Israel's brutal military rule, coupled with the establishment and expansion of illegal Jewish settlements, has coerced Palestinians into enclaves creating further fragmentation and segregation. The objective? maintain Jewish-Israeli hegemony and maximize control of land. In the city of Jerusalem, the Israeli official policy is to maintain at least a 60% Jewish majority. If you've always felt a deep yearning for Jerusalem, now is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity not only to stand within its gates, but also to build the home of your dreams there. So where do all the Palestinians live now? 3.4 million live outside of Israel in the occupied territories, mainly in refugee camps in neighboring countries. 2.5 million Palestinians live in Israel and East Jerusalem, restricted to enclaves that make up around 3% of the entire area. 3 million Palestinians live in the occupied West Bank, but are only allowed to access 40% of the land to live and work. The rest of the area is for the Jewish-Israeli settlers only. Two million are trapped in the Gaza Strip, one of the most densely populated areas in the world. Fragmentation of the Palestinian society and the dispossession of their lands are key pillars of Israel's apartheid system to maintain domination and control. But there's more. The unequal structure of nationality and status, restrictions on freedom of movement, use of military rule, denial of right to political participation, or the right to peaceful protest, and cruel separation of families, all add to the complex system that we see today. The world in general hasn't woken up to the fact that there is an entrenched system of oppression against Palestinians across 
Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, wherever they may live, by the Israeli state. It's a system that's been put in place and maintained for decades. And it's that system that is the root cause of so many of the violations, the misery and the suffering that millions of Palestinians face on a daily basis. One way to understand this segregation and oppression is to look at the ID system. Jewish Israelis have only one ID card, with a status that grants them the rights to live almost anywhere they wish in the country. They can move freely with access to health care and vast resources. Palestinians, on the other hand, have four types of ID cards, if any at all. The kind of ID card you are given determines the level of rights you can enjoy and controls where you can go and what you can do. If you hold a green card, you are subject to military rule. And if you have a green card with a Gaza address, it means you're trapped in a 365 km square open air prison under Israeli military blockade in place since 2007. Israel controls what goes in and what goes out, from children's toys to medical supplies. 90% of the people have no access to safe drinking water, 47% are unemployed, 56% live in poverty. Palestinians with a Gaza ID are forbidden from going to Jerusalem in the West Bank, even if they have family there. Some people in the West Bank are considered to live there illegally and can be deported immediately to Gaza if found by the army, even if they have been in the West Bank for decades. Whereas, if you hold a green card which has a West Bank address, then you live here. This green card means you can live within specific enclaves surrounded by illegal Israeli settlements. And there's a separation wall and fences built around you since 2002, which Palestinians call the Apartheid Wall. It's 8 metres high in places and 700 kilometres long. That's twice the height of the Berlin Wall and more than four times its length. 80% of it is built inside the West Bank, occupying even more Palestinian land. There are separate roads for Israelis and Palestinians, hundreds of checkpoints scattered throughout, not to mention the 54 years of occupation which has devastated the lives of millions of Palestinians. Palestinians with a West Bank ID can travel to Gaza or East Jerusalem, but only if they receive a permit from the military to do so. This blue ID is for Palestinians in East Jerusalem, they can travel to the occupied West Bank as well as to Israel, but they are not citizens of Israel. They have only been granted a residency status. This means that they cannot vote in Israeli national elections, and if they leave East Jerusalem for too long, for example, to study or work abroad or in other parts of the occupied West Bank, their residency is revoked, so they can't return. Since 1967, Israel has revoked the residency status of more than 14,600 Palestinians from East Jerusalem. Finally, Palestinian citizens of Israel. They have been through it all. They are the group that remained in Israel despite the ethnic cleansing in 1948. They lived under Israeli military rule that applied only to them and not Jewish Israelis for 18 years between 1948 and 1966. They were made citizens, but can never become nationals and enjoy equality unless they become Jewish, which the law prohibits. They are the only Palestinians who can run and vote in Israeli elections, and they can move relatively freely, but the inequality against them was never dismantled, and they face daily institutional discrimination, including as members of parliament. And if this complex ID system wasn't enough to segregate the Palestinian community, in 2002, Israel introduced a law that prohibits family unification. That's right, denying Palestinians the right to live with their loved ones if their ID cards are different. And this woman is one of thousands of Palestinians who Israel will not issue any ID card. She can't travel, can't hug her family, only see them meters away across the border. Putting down roots, the family home, these are crucial parts of what make a strong community. To make sure Palestinian communities can't develop any further, Israel has made it almost impossible to grant building permits for Palestinian homes. So, Palestinians live in a catch-22 situation. In order to have shelter or develop their communities, they must build without a permit. And if they do so, Israel can demolish the structures on the basis that it was built without a permit. Right now, there are over 150,000 Palestinians currently living under the constant threat of demolition 
and forced eviction, many of them for the second or third time. In the West Bank, an average of 18 Palestinian structures were demolished every week in 2020. The same year, Israel issued 1,094 building permits for Jewish applicants, and only one for a Palestinian. This goes back to the heart of the issue. To maintain the state's character as Jewish, Israel systematically disadvantages Palestinians while privileging Jewish Israelis. This racist privilege has been enshrined in laws, policies and practices and it enables Palestinian resources to be taken in order to economically benefit Jewish Israeli citizens. The system of apartheid is the Israeli state's oppression and domination of Palestinians on a daily basis. It's the, the laws, the policies and the practices that it puts in place and then implements to control Palestinians' daily lives. And then the, the crimes of apartheid, the crimes of apartheid are those acts, those violations, those patterns of violations that Israel is committing to create and then maintain that system of apartheid. Amnesty International and other rights organizations have been documenting patterns of human rights violations and international crimes for decades. These are the most visible and violent part of this system. At the end of May 2020, 4,236 Palestinians were held in Israeli prisons. And 352, including two children, were held without charge or trial. Between September 2000 and February 2017, Israeli forces killed 4,868 Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian territories, including 1,793 children, outside the context of armed conflict. And Amnesty International is not aware of any case in which an Israeli soldier has been convicted of willfully causing the death of a Palestinian in the occupied territories since 1987. This imbalance of rights, justice and accountability is never more clear than when a Jewish Israeli life appears to have more value than a Palestinian's. Israel's apartheid and its cruel and prolonged strategies deliberately disadvantage Palestinians wherever they live. They cannot claim and enjoy equality with Jewish Israelis. Look, everyone can make a difference. Together, we need to speak out on behalf of Palestinians. We need to speak about the human rights violations that they are suffering. We need to talk about the apartheid, the system of apartheid to which they have subjected. Because by campaigning together, putting pressure on the Israeli state, we can have this system of apartheid dismantled. Join us, join our campaign. Everyone has the power to make a difference. Okay, everyone has a part to make a difference. Setiap daripada kita boleh mainkan peranan um, untuk bersama-sama membantu rakyat Palestin untuk membebaskan negara mereka. Everyone can make a difference. We need to speak up for the Palestinian. Um, sebentar lagi akan ada video daripada rakyat Palestin sendiri. So mungkin ramai yang tertanya-tanya, oh, kenapa kita nak kena bercakap untuk rakyat Palestin? Jangan risau, rakyat Palestin sendiri sedang berusaha untuk bercakap bagi diri mereka tapi Kalau kita dengar betul-betul um, video klip daripada Amnesty tadi, mereka sangat dipecah-pecah-pecahkan. Okay, sebelum ni saya pernah dapat uh, soalan. Adakah West Bank tu Palestin ataupun Gaza tu Palestin? So bila kita tengok map eh, kita tak ada map pula kat sini. Tapi kalau kita tengok map Palestin, dia adalah sebuah negara yang dipisahkan sebelah West. West Bank tu adalah di sebelah West lah. West Bank tu satu kawasan uh, berapa ribu kilometer tadi ada mention dekat dalam video. Dan Gaza adalah satu lagi kawasan di, di opposite direction. Jadi untuk mereka pergi daripada Gaza ke West Bank, macam video tadi cakap, tak possible. Okay. Okay, saya ada soalan uh, untuk penonton-penonton semua. Tadi di dalam video MST ni ada disebutkan, kalau orang rakyat Israel tu mereka cuma ada satu je jenis kad pengenalan. Tapi Palestin ada berapa jenis kad pengenalan? Okay, boleh masukkan jawapan anda di ruangan komen. Uh, kita sekarang sedang live di Facebook, MWCQP, BDS Malaysia dan satu lagi adalah Facebook United Against Apartheid. Okay, di mana kita buat kita punya virtual run tu. Uh, jadi um, 
jika an, anda rasa macam maklumat yang diberikan ataupun sepanjang uh, sharing yang dilakukan dalam Culture Night hari ini uh, sangat bermanfaat anda boleh share, like dan juga komen di ruangan komen dan nanti kita akan uh, naikkan uh, ruangan apa ni komen-komen anda kita akan bacakan bersama-sama. Okey ada banyak sangat maklumat uh, daripada video tadi uh, tapi jangan risau kalau rasa macam nanti bila kita dah habis live stream ni boleh boleh ulang tayang semula and you can listen back to all the the facts that were given. Uh, tahun lepas Amnesty uh, ada keluarkan saya rasa lebih kurang 500 pages um, fakta-fakta berkaitan dengan Israel and what they are doing lah. So seperti official poster saya di belakang ni you know, uh, hashtag united against racism. So anda boleh tulis uh, apa info baru yang anda dapat dan lepas tu gunakan hashtag ni united against racism. So kalau zaman 80-an, apa 70-an, waktu zaman apartheid dekat South Africa kan kita kita macam macam tak boleh nak fikir macam mana uh, dibahagi-bahagikan orang putih dengan berdasarkan warna kulit eh orang yang kulitnya cerah dengan orang yang kulitnya gelap um, ada satu, saya, saya pernah nampak satu gambar ni dia cakap uh, only whites are allowed dia nak restoran, nak makan dan kalau nak masuk kat situ awak kena berkulit putih tapi benda tu berlaku di South Africa. So macam majoriti orang kulit hitam tapi tak boleh masuk. Yang boleh masuk restoran tu hanya orang yang berkulit putih sahaja. So um, that is like in the 80s and the 70s. So we we don't exactly can. Okay? Kalau saya sendiri rasa saya tak boleh macam nak bayangkan macam mana boleh ada letak satu papan tanda macam tu. Kalau kita sekarang letak okay siapa tak vaksin tak boleh masuk. Kita understand lah kan sebab covid kan. Tapi dia tulis kat situ kalau tak kulit putih tak boleh masuk. So Bayangkan tadi dekat dalam video tu dia ada tu, dia ada mention pasal uh, jalan raya khas untuk orang Israel, jalan raya untuk orang uh, Palestin. Kenapa sebab orang Palestin ni dia kena lalu checkpoint. Sangat banyak checkpoint dia orang uh, jadi dari jalan dia khas sendiri. So macam kalau orang Israel dia ada dia punya highway sendiri. Uh, kenapa sebab dia tak, tak nak letaklah checkpoint tu nanti orang dia akan lambat ke apa kan. Uh, so even Perbandingan ni pun macam tak boleh nak masuk restoran Itu untuk waktu appetite Itu yang kita nampak sangat signifikan Oh ini perbezaan antara satu golongan dengan satu golongan Dan jalan raya ni kalau ini bukan appetite uh, Then if this is not Israel appetite If you cannot use the same road as others Then I don't know what appetite is <laughs> Okay um, sedikit summary daripada video tadi Kita nampak Raya Palestin ni dipecah-pecahkan Ada enam juta rakyat Palestin yang mereka panggil diaspora maknanya rakyat-rakyat uh, Palestin yang berada di negara-negara lain uh, dan mereka di deny rights to return maknanya dihalang untuk pulang sebagai rakyat Palestin sendiri ada 6 juta um, dan ada 3.4 juta plus um, pelarian refugees di negara-negara berdekatan contohnya macam kita pernah dengar uh, Zantari refugees apa ni di di uh, border antara Jordan ya yeah? ada satu refugee yang agak besar juga so itu pun dah dekat satu juta dah satu pelarian uh, Palestin dan mereka dah sampai ke third generation dah so ada 3.4 juta pelarian uh, di negara sekitar dan ada 2.5 juta rakyat Palestin di Israel so Israel dia dah dah kan tadi ada beberapa jenis uh, ID kan so mereka dah Uh, segmentize, okay ni orang Israel yang Jewish, ni orang Israel yang bukan agama Jewish dan ini ada orang Palestin. Uh, dan tadi ada 1.8 juta eh, rakyat Palestin yang yang apa eh, yang didiskriminasi tapi mereka masih tinggal dan mereka boleh vote. Uh, itu yang kalau ada yang komen apakah empat jenis ID dan uh, kita boleh baca sama-sama lah. Okay. Um, Betul. Zatari Camp adalah nama pelarian, camp pelarian uh, yang berada di border dengan uh, Jordan. Okey, um, seterusnya. Tadi ada banyak fakta kan? So sekarang kita akan goes back to cultural night. <laughs> ada satu lagu daripada British rapper. So now we will go to the next agenda. Um, there is a, uh, we're going to play to you a song by Loki. He is a British rapper and activist from London. Um, the song title is Long Live Palestine, fit, um, 
Frankie Boyley, Maverick Sabrin, Ken Loach, Khalid Siddiq and Mike Khalil. So ada banyak uh, orang-orang lain sekali dekat dalam lagu ni. Okay, apa yang specialnya pasal Loki ni, Loki ni nama orang eh. Apa yang specialnya pasal Loki ni adalah dia adalah British Pro Israel, uh, sorry, British Pro Israel dah lobby dekat Spotify untuk deletekan lagu Loki ni. So lagu yang kita nak mainkan ni, um, ada permintaan yang Spotify dapat untuk di apa ya di di delete kan lah. So ada banyak musician dan juga celebrities yang yang menyokong uh, untuk lagu ini dikekalkan di Spotify. Uh, antaranya adalah kalau siapa kenal Anwar Hadid, ya yeah? adik beradik dengan Gigi Hadid um, dan juga actor Michael. Malarkey, Pink Floyd. Uh, so ada ada petition lah yang cakap cakap dengan Spotify. Kalau boleh j- jangan uh, jangan pedulikan lobby yang mereka sedang buat sebab Loki is is doing like a advocacy tapi dalam bentuk lagu because he's a rapper. So he he apa kita sokong mana kita menyokong Palestin dalam dalam cara yang kita tahu lah kan. Okay. So tim teknikal kalau dah ready kita boleh playkan lagu dari Loki. Silakan. As you prepare your breakfast, think of others. Do not forget to feed the pigeons. As you wage your wars, think of others. Do not forget those who fight for peace. As you pay your water bill, think of others, those who are nursed by clouds. As you return home to your home, think of others. Do not forget the people of the camps. As you sleep and count the stars, think of others, those who have nowhere to sleep. As you liberate yourself with metaphors, think of others, those who have lost their right to speak. As you think of others far away, think of yourself and say, if only I were a candle in the night. This is for Palestine, of course, the capital Jerusalem Unarmed people marching to the wall and they're shooting them Suppression is a question, resistance is the answer Long live Palestine, long live Gaza Palestine, of course, the capital Jerusalem Unarmed people marching to the wall and they're shooting them Suppression is a question, resistance is the answer Long live Palestine, long live Gaza All you see is war every time you turn your head and Bloodshed on the floor Mother cries, who cries for her this time it's truth between these walls See the lies between the lines They hide where the bullets coming from From the tyrants dressed in our disguise I'm gonna ride until the end Even if I get a pushback for all my friends Cause you know that I'm a fighter Let me see a lighter And we not gonna stop the Palestine is free But still you know that I'm a rider till the end Even if I got a pushback for all my friends Cause you know that I'm a fighter Let me see a lighter And we not gonna stop the Palestine is free Talk to not know, talk to be blind, talk to not care Tell me what's real, borderlines, military despair How to exist if there's no rights to be human in fear And if you take away your home, where's the house supposed to live? Talk to not know, talk to be blind, talk to not care Tell me what's real, borderlines, military despair How to exist if there's no rights to be human in fear And if you take away your home, where's the house supposed to live? Butorea could resist without a wheelchair Ten year challenge, tell Rick if we are still here And tell that killer Netanyahu he should feel fear The old live through us and guarantee the children will care Criminal, not invincible and you know it Samadun, Samadun still sitting in their stoic May not feel us with you when you listen to our poems You inspire humanity, your resistance is heroic Regardless of talk, here's time we answer the call Through your strength of spirit you provide example for all How to live, how to love when attacked from the clouds above Loud and clear the songs you sung can't be drowned by the sound of guns Or just watch your tragic time through a satellite dish The least that we can give you is an anthem like this They panic, try to analyse and sanitise this But we love you more than ever still, Palestine lives Time 
Time to change this state No change, no change, no Run away, away All the hate you face, no Time to change this state No change, no change, no Continuing oppression of the Palestinians Encircling of the people of Gaza The killing of civilians, the burning of homes The daily oppression, the theft of land the apartheid system in the West Bank where there are two road systems and I've been and I'm sure you have and you see the the, the Israeli road you see like a, a spanking new highway with just the settler cars going backwards and forth then you see the old Palestinian roads and it's clearly it's it's people living under two sets of laws it's an apartheid system so all this is being uncovered and the boycotts and divestment and sanctions campaign which I support and I'm sure many other people do as a peaceful protest against the Israeli oppression. Support groups have got to keep proclaiming the rights of the Palestinians are the right to return, the right to um, the right to their homeland really and um, and the theft of land is Israel is breaking international law, it is breaking the Geneva Convention. Bench, 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 bench. Okay, it's, it's really an, an interesting uh, video. Uh, we really hope Spotify did not uh, take this down. Um, saya sangat suka yang bila dia sebut lagu apa, Free Free Palestine, Free Free Palestine. Eh, Tiba-tiba dah boleh jadi rappers kan. Okay, and one of the ayat yang uh, mereka ada nyanyikan tadi adalah If you take the home, how are they supposed to live? Kalau kita ambil rumah-rumah mereka, rumah-rumah uh, orang Palestin, bagaimana mereka nak hidup? Eh, kalau kalau ingat beberapa bulan yang lalu kita ada kes uh, Sheikh perkampungan Sheikh Jarrah ya di West Bank. Bagaimana mereka uh, nak nak ambil tanah tu secara haram dan mereka pasal mereka tanam pokok. Jadi um, untuk MWCQP um, Malaysia Women's Coalition for Al-Quds and Palestine jadi bagaimana kita nak counter back balik mereka punya uh, this kind of uh, apa ya usaha untuk mengambil tanah-tanah rakyat Palestin di West Bank ni adalah dengan kita menanam pokok-pokok zaitun juga. Nanti boleh pergi ke <laughs> Facebook, uh, Facebook MWCQP uh, untuk menyokong kempen penanaman uh, pokok zaitun kita. Um, yeah. So, ada beberapa komen yang masuk untuk lagu ni? Uh, okay, okay. Um, so, untuk Loki ada ramai yang tanya untuk dia punya IG ataupun dia punya Spotify dan Spotify boleh masuk Spotify dan just Google Loki je lah. Uh, tajuk lagu tadi adalah Long Live Palestine. And uh, kalau Instagram dia nanti kita punya technical team akan letakkan dia punya Instagram. Uh, keep on supporting him. For, uh, okay, ni tadi. Mereka punya uh, Loki punya Instagram slash Loki online. Dan kita kita uh, support orang yang kita bersama-sama dengan golongan yang cuba untuk menegakkan kebenaran lah. Tak kisah uh, cara macam mana pun. Dia kalau 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 lihat kan because um, IAW, Israeli Apartheid Week is a global movement. Mungkin ramai yang tertanya-tanya, eh kenapa tak ada syekh yang apa bagi ceramah ke, you know, baca Quran ke kan. Sebab ini, uh, sebab dia adalah secara global jadi ada beberapa video yang dikongsikan adalah lagu lah. Jadi kalau kita nak banyakkan bahan-bahan dia boleh je nanti just keep on sharing uh, dekat-dekat kita punya social media. Setiap negara ada cara yang berbeza bagaimana bagaimana untuk menyampaikan maklumat. Uh, yang pentingnya adalah kita dapat uh, satu maklumat baru dan saya harap uh, kita dah live almost satu jam setengah dah ni. Kita dah sampai ke video yang terakhir selepas ini. So harapnya dalam satu jam setengah ni uh, semua penonton mendapat ilmu yang baru ataupun uh, mendapat satu info yang mana kita boleh gunakan dan kita kongsi bersama-sama dengan rakan-rakan uh, kita. Okay, um, ini adalah video yang terakhir dan video rasanya yang dinanti-nantikan uh, daripada semua. Nak kata Palestin kena pertahankan diri mereka. Ya, yeah, ada video daripada rakyat Palestin sendiri, video daripada Ibnu An-Najjar from Gaza um, yang bertajuk Land Day. So Tim Tadika, boleh kita playkan video? Land Day. History repeats itself. The Land Day happens every day in Palestine. Land Palestinians commemorate the Land Day. On the 30th of March, where marches and rallies take place everywhere in Palestine.
Today, we recall this anniversary to tell the Zionist occupation that we will never ever forget Palestine and we will do whatever we can to liberate it and Beit al Maqdis. 46 years ago, Israel has announced a plan of confiscating more than 2,000 hectares owned by Palestinians. The Palestinians declared a general strike in protest. The Zionist army stormed Palestinian homes with tanks and armored vehicles. By the end of the day, six Palestinians were murdered and 70 were injured. For decades, Israel has been planning land annexation and confiscation plans in the West Bank and Jerusalem that were accelerated following the announcement of former U.S. President Donald Trump's Deal of the Century in January 2020. As a result, dozens of families across the West Bank and East Jerusalem have been evicted and displaced. Israel today implements a systematic policy of forcing Palestinian residents in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank to migrate and leave their lands. Palestinian farmers and landowners are unable to access hundreds of hectares of land belonging to their families due to Israel's restriction and annexation policy. Farmers' safety depends on the Israeli soldiers' mood. They could be murdered at any second. After 46 years, Israel's annexation of Palestinian lands, which constitutes a flagrant violation of international law, continues. Human rights institutions should not stand idle by as they see Palestinian lands, houses and property being seized by a brutal illegal military occupation and its hordes of extremist settlers. The land day means a lot to us. The screams of the land day's martyrs still resonate and we will never fail their souls. We will continue our struggle on behalf of the Muslim Ummah to liberate our land. The Zionists say, the old will die and the young will forget. Many of the old Palestinians are still alive and they dream of the day they will be able to return to their homes. My grandmother was expelled from her family's land in Jaffa during the Palestinian Nakba in 1948. Her last commandment before she died was to do all we can to return. We might forgive the Zionist criminals, but we will never forget our Palestine. As we appreciate all of your efforts to support my Palestinian people through your BDS campaigns, we promise you that we will never give up on our struggle till we liberate Palestine. This is Palestine and will always be Palestine. Trima Kase. Thank you very much. Okay, sama sama. So he tried to speak Malay, yeah. Terima kasih sama sama. Um, so di hujung tadi, uh, <coughs> ibnu uh, sorry, nama dia siapa tadi? Ibnu An Najjar uh, ada sebut yang kalau kita sama sama support mereka, mereka tidak akan berputus asa dan mereka akan cuba untuk pulang balik ke Palestine. Um, dan juga semasa video Loki tadi ada ada kan mereka tengah buat demonstrasi kan dan ada perkataan exist resist and return. So mereka nak nak uh, memperjuangkan untuk orang uh, untuk rakyat-rakyat Palestin ni mereka masih wujud uh, mereka kita dan mereka akan bersama-sama untuk mempertahankan uh, kedaulatan negara mereka dan juga mereka mahu pulang return. Mereka mahu pulang balik um, saya ada saya, saya ada terima hadiah daripada kawan uh, di Palestin yang mana kalau lihat di, di official poster di belakang ni ada kunci ya nampak ada kunci di atas ni kan uh, di sebelah sini kiri <laughs> di sebelah kiri dan kanan ya kita nampak kunci so uh, kawan saya ni dalam cross stitch dia maknanya dalam sulaman mereka memang mereka akan masukkan kunci dan kunci ni um, mengikut kata kawan saya ni Uh, kalau nenek-nenek di di Palestin tak kisahlah di West Bank ataupun di Gaza mereka akan simpan kunci-kunci rumah mereka yang telah dirobohkan uh, dan kunci-kunci ni adalah macam ni kunci betul lah rumah mereka yang telah dirobohkan dan kunci ni adalah satu tanda ingatan untuk mereka mesti kembali dan bina rumah mereka sendiri dan uh, yeah it's, it's it's their rights to to return back to to Palestine to their own land So saya memang selalu nampaklah dalam mereka punya sulaman ni ada kunci-kunci tu. 
Okey. Um, so, uh, Alhamdulillah itu sahaja yang kita ada untuk Culture Night ni. Ada tujuh video yang telah kita uh, kongsi bersama dengan penonton sekalian. Uh, kita harap uh, semua orang mendapat ilmu yang baru dan boleh dikongsikan dan sama-sama kita memperjuangkan uh, isu Palestin ini. Um, akhir, akhir sekali, uh, saya memetik kata-kata daripada Nelson Mandela. We know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinian. Okay, dalam bahasa Melayunya, uh, kata-kata daripada Nelson Mandela, kita tahu bahawa kebebasan atau kemerdekaan kita tidak sempurna tanpa kebebasan rakyat Palestin tu sendiri. So sebab uh, Nelson Mandela telah melalui zaman apartheid itu kan. Jadi beliau uh, sangat-sangat memahami dan bila beliau lihat apa yang jadi di Palestin, um, mereka, uh, beliau mengeluarkan kata-kata ni. Maksudnya kita punya kita tak kita tak betul-betul bebas lah selagi uh, rakyat Palestin uh, tidak dibebaskan. Okay. Uh, So esok insyaAllah kita dah start uh, kita punya tarawih. Uh, jadi kami, uh, saya bagi pihak pengancur mengucapkan selamat berpuasa kepada semua dan uh, banyak-banyakkan doa waktu Ramadan uh, untuk uh, kedaulatan uh, dan juga kebebasan uh, rakyat Palestin. So itu sahaja uh, daripada kami untuk IAW Israeli Apartheid Week dengan hashtag kita United Against Racism. So sama-sama kita menyebarkan maklumat yang betul mengenai Palestin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.